Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the Solemnity of Pentecost. We are united today in both person and with our online family. The Mass Attentions for this liturgy is for Nanito Aragon. For our online assembly, you can find the song sheet for today's Mass in our worship guide on the resources page of the website. From home, you can sing along. As per diocesan and CDC guidelines, it is respectfully requested that you do not sing while attending the Mass in person. The Sacrament of Reconciliation is now only offered Saturdays from 10 a.m. till noon. Monday Daily Mass is no longer offered. Eucharistic Adoration will be held this Friday, June 5th, for one hour from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., immediately following Friday's Mass. A reservation in attendance at Friday's Mass and Adoration is required. Reservations are required to attend weekend and weekday Mass beginning on Wednesday, June 3rd at 10 a.m. Masses will still be live streamed on our Facebook page. Would you please rise? Good evening. Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Dear friends, I'm so excited to welcome you for today's celebration as we celebrate the Feast of the Pentecost. And I'm happy to say welcome again to our church. And I say you are most welcome. And I want to say we missed you a lot. And for those who are attending through live streaming mass, I say also thank you for your participation, for your prayers. And today we are all connected together as we celebrate today the Feast of the Pentecost, we come to acknowledge that the power of the Holy Spirit always guides us and gives us strength. As we continue to be empowered with this power of the Holy Spirit, dear friends, let us be ready to be thankful for the gift of life and for the gift of peace. And let us be thankful for each and everything, especially for our family members, for their lives, and for their journey of life. As we prepare now to celebrate this Eucharistic celebration, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May you, may you, multiple God, forgive our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory. 
Glory to God in the highest. Glory. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast to sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time came for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind. And it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement, as they asked, are not all these people who are in amazement are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, 
in Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Our response is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, may my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works. O Lord, the earth is full of your creation. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in every one. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For one in spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Good evening. Somehow it seems appropriate 
that the Church of the Ascension is reopening the public mass on the Feast of the Pentecost. First, on behalf of Father Daniel, Deacon Tom, Deacon Gary, myself, and the entire staff, welcome back. We're glad to see you. You were missed. Today, we gather as a family for the first time since the coronavirus pandemic restrictions were announced. Joyfully, we will come to the table of the Lord to share in Eucharistic celebration. This is one of the three great feasts of the church year. On Christmas, we celebrate the birthday of Christ in his physical body. On Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. On Pentecost, we celebrate the birthday of Christ in his mystical body, the church. Pentecost Sunday marks the end of the Easter season and it commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and the disciples and the fruits and the effects of that event. My point in this homily will be the Holy Spirit and the gifts that he provides. In Jeremiah, God reveals a future covenant with the house of Israel in which his law is written within them, that is, written upon their hearts. With his death and resurrection, Jesus initiated that new covenant. With the rejection of Jesus by the Jews, the followers of Christ, the church, became the new Israel. Ten days ago, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension as Jesus Christ returned to heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. Before ascending, Jesus told the disciples, it is better for you that I go, because otherwise the Spirit will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. Why did Jesus have to leave? Why was he sending a substitute? If we had to choose between Jesus and the Holy Spirit, wouldn't most of us choose Jesus? I'll get back to this. In the first reading, we have Luke's description of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Gathered in the upper room, the door was locked for fear of the Jews, and the apostles were united of one mind, and they prayed. Then there was a sound of a strong driving wind, and tongues of fire came to rest on each of the apostles. The wind heralded the action of God. It was not a destructive wind, like the kind that uproots trees or knocks down buildings. Rather, it was a divine wind that entered into the upper room and into the apostles. The tongues of fire were physical symbols of the presence of the Spirit who was acting upon the apostles. With his gifts and charisms, the Spirit changed them from fearful to fearless ambassadors for Christ, and he opened a new chapter for humanity. By the breath of the God, the Holy Spirit has renewed and recreated us. No longer simply beloved creatures, we are now brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, now children of a loving God, and we can pray directly to the Father, Abba, just as Jesus did. The sound of the wind was so strong that a large crowd gathered outside. The crowd was composed of a variety of nationalities as Jews from different countries had gathered in Jerusalem for a Jewish festival. They witnessed the sound of the wind and they heard the disciples witnessing to the mighty acts of God in their native languages. There were two reactions from the crowd. On the one hand, witnesses were astounded and bewildered and asked, what does this mean? On the other hand, naysayers were dismissing what they saw as the result of too much wine. In the second reading, Paul is writing to the church that he established at Corinth. He is addressing issues that are dividing the community. In this particular passage, Paul is addressing the competition among the Corinthians for the higher gifts of the Spirit. This competition is adversely affecting the community's ability ability to worship together. Within the larger community, scattered small communities and competitive factions have emerged. Paul reminds them 
about unity. Using the analogy of the body, he points out that there are many different parts, each with its own unique place and purpose. All of these parts make their unique contributions to the smooth functioning of the body whole. So too it is with the gifts of the spirit. Each one of us receives gifts for some purpose, different kinds of gifts, different forms of service, and different workings. Although unique to each of us, those gifts are aimed at the smooth functioning of the body of Christ, his church. In the one spirit, we are all baptized into the one body. In this gospel, we find John's Pentecost. Jesus imparts the spirit on the disciples. Jesus says, peace be with you, twice. After the second peace be with you, Jesus sends them forth. Then breathing on him, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus is breathing on his fledgling church, just as God the Father did, breathing life into Adam. Jesus is the incarnate word of God, came into this world to reveal God to humanity. When we learn God is love. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God acting in this world. No matter how close we get to Jesus, he is always external, whereas the Spirit is within. He is within our hearts. Jesus gave us knowledge of the Father. The Holy Spirit enters into us and gives us the heart about which Jeremiah prophesied. The gifts of wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of God are infused in every Christian at baptism and sealed in the sacrament of confirmation. They are readily available at all times and intended to develop through experience. They are indispensable to the successful conduct of the Christian way of life. Getting back to choosing between Jesus and the Holy Spirit, why did Jesus say that it is better for us if we have the Spirit? Basically, this means a choice between having Jesus and being Jesus. It is the Spirit that makes us the body of Christ. It is the Spirit that gives us life and fills us with love. The Spirit acts on us with his gifts, his graces, and his charisms. These gifts and charisms allow us to become Jesus to others by showing God's love to our fellow man. Without these gifts and charisms, we probably would remain very much like those fearful apostles hiding in the upper room. That's why Jesus left. When Catholics hear charismatics and evangelicals talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, we get nervous. But as a Jesuit priest named Father Thomas Reese points out, we may have had a spiritual experience where we felt the presence of God, but most of the time we plod through pedestrian spiritual lives with no fireworks. This is probably because we do not know how to recognize the Spirit's presence, not just in special moments, but in everyday life. Every time we experience love, we experience the Spirit. It may be a spouse, a child for his parents, friends or family, a stranger, first responders, the doctors and nurses and medical researchers that are caring for us during this pandemic, those dedicating their lives to justice and peace, or an environmentalist just trying to protect Mother Earth, and the list goes on. It is the presence of the Spirit within each of us that calls us to be more than we thought we could be and gives us the power to love unselfishly, to sacrifice ourselves for others, and to commit to justice and peace. The seven gifts of the Spirit are designed to be used in the world for the purpose of transforming that world for Christ. We are called to use these gifts in our own time and place to advance the kingdom of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united with Christ and with one another in one body. We join together to give thanks to God the Father, and when we break bread, 
our eyes see Christ in our midst. There was a prayer I learned in making a Curcio weekend retreat some 20 plus years ago. It seems appropriate today. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. Let us not be like those naysayers at the first Pentecost. May we go forth from this Church of the Ascension on this feast day of the Pentecost with a renewed awareness of the Holy Spirit and these spiritual gifts. And may God grant us renewed dedication toward using them in our daily lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we listen to the Spirit crying within us, we present our petitions to God. Holy Spirit, Continue to empower and guide our Holy Father, bishops, clergy, and catechists as they spread the message of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for our church being open for liturgy and the Eucharist, and in faithful anticipation that the entire family of Ascension will worship together soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our world, that the transforming power of the Holy Spirit fill their hearts with a compassion for peace, justice, and respect for all life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this weekend of the first anniversary of the mass shooting in Virginia Beach, we lift up the prayer who, to the souls lost, those injured, their family members in our community of Virginia Beach. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we ask for your comfort and protection over all those in need of prayer. For those who are ill, we ask that you bring them peace and healing, especially Sally King, Mary Ann DeLuca, Audrey Frischman, Angie Hughes. Those names in our bulletin and for the names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died in the promise of your resurrection, welcoming into your eternal kingdom, especially for this weekend's mass intentions. Benito Aragon, Carl Bush, and Jean Blakely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Father, Creator, you send your spirit with gifts for us. We ask you to hear the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Dear friends, this is usually the time when the collection basket is passed around, but that is not possible with the current situation. And for you who are present now, you put the envelope at the back there, and there is a basket there after we finish the mass when you are going out to the back door, the big door. And for those who are at home, this is the time now you can join online. And I think now you, get, you see on the screen. And I would like to extend my thanks, and even for those who are outside our state, for your prayers and for your financial support and for each and everything you have been together with us. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice, and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true and right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all people the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit 
graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Mary our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant, Nonito Aragon, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace, and I ask if you're watching live stream to please put a comment into your fellow Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. As you can see, the chairs are different. Communion is going to be distributed a little differently. Um, Father will be on this side. He'll start with Kay right here. Then he'll go over to the table over there. Uh, we ask that you put your hands out like this. It gives us a little bit bigger target because we do not want to uh, touch you uh, in between. Um, anything else I missed? Yeah. And, and we'll, we have hand sanitizer there. So thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. Out of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Come breathe within. There 
there must be more than this. Spirit of God, we wait for you. Fill us anew. Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, self-guide, we pray the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, just a quick thank you to everyone uh, who came in. You are our guinea pigs, and um, we thank you for being here. Uh, we certainly want to invite people who uh, have opted to stay home at this time when they feel that it's safe. We invite them to come and make an appointment uh, to join us here. Again, uh, as Father and uh, Deacon Jim have mentioned, we certainly appreciate seeing you here. We have really missed you. I know that you've missed being here as well. So thank you for coming this evening. Please stand and bow your heads for the blessing. And in each prayer, you just respond, Amen. May God, the Father of light, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' mind by the outpouring of the Spirit in the paraclete, Grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same spirit. Amen. Amen. 
May he the, may the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our celebration has ended. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. We have to tell them how to go now. So for the dismissal, what we are going to have is the ushers are going to be directing the people from the back to come to the center from each side and to exit. And uh, remember to keep your social distancing as you go out. As Father had mentioned, there are baskets back there for uh, donations, and we certainly, again, thank you for being here this evening. It was wonderful seeing everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again.